Okay, so this is about the time we had the tornado, what, a week ago? Yep. So this is about the time when people forget. This is when people start petering off, helping, and this is when you see it break down. This is when you need the, the my wife was saying, I'm not gonna offer help until a week or two into this, because that's when people start falling off the bandwagon. Yeah. Right? Yep. Have you noticed that over time people start to dwindle? Uh, I think it's still fresh enough now that, that, that we haven't noticed that quite yet, okay. but it's, it's coming. I, okay, I well, talked to a pastor friend of mine the other day and told him, I said, Launch Point Church is planning to be the second or third week church, not the, not the immediate response church, although we've been, been in our community and we will continue to be. But we're making plans to be here three weeks from now, four weeks from now, five weeks from now. And we've actually adopted a Hispanic community here that was being underserved. Mm -hmm. uh, along with a uh, Spanish congregation because we need an interpreter because they're not being served well. But the way that they're going to need service is going to require a month, two months, three months, some of them. And so I, th I think you're exactly right. I think we need to be ready and prepared in the long term. Yeah, we should be ramping up, not fading out. So um, the, the cool thing about speaking with you about this is because you're in the red zone. You're right at ground zero. You were right, I mean, you live right near where it happened. How far were you from Lebanon Road? Uh, my house is less than 10 miles. I, my yard was covered with insulation from, from the, the areas that have been hit. When I oh, woke up. no. Can you, so, I'm going to shut my mouth. And I'm going to let you tell me what's been going on and how it is, where we're at right now. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to let you take over on that because you've seen it all. You're, you're working with the Red Cross. You're working with a bunch of organizations on healing. Yeah. So Lebanon is, let me tell you, we, there was an organization, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's a, it's a national organization, relief organization that comes in in areas like this. And we were in a meeting with them earlier and not earlier today, but earlier several days ago. And for our Recover Lebanon 2020, which is a conglomeration of organizations and not-for-profit churches coming together to figure out who needs the resources, what funds are available, and how to get them re those resources to the people. So we're in this meeting trying to organize that thing. And the, the guy from this national organization, I wish I could remember what the name of it was right off, says that we've never, he said, never have we come into a community that was this far ahead before we got here. He said, you guys are doing the work right now that we were doing, that we're used to doing two or three weeks down the road. Wow. There's been such a, an incredible response of uh, love and passion here. Uh, but that's that's the community we live in. That's the benefit of being in the volunteer state, right? We, we know that um, we can always count on our neighbor. The unity. It's the American spirit still true to life today. At the end of the day, you take all the politics out of everything, Black, white, red, it doesn't matter. My neighbor's hurt and I'm coming to them. You right, know? right. And so you see that we've got right now, uh, there's a church in town. Uh, First Baptist Church in town is is hosting um, uh, Hispanic population in their gym. It's like an emergency shelter because the neighborhood I was talking about was largely destroyed, so they don't have a place to stay. So they're staying there. Red Cross is set up there with interpreters and ensuring that their needs are met, feeding them, all that kind of stuff. We're involved in that. Um, I just got a word this morning from a buddy of mine, pastor friend of mine, that the National Guard is going to be coming here, like 70 National Guard guys. And they need places, or not places, but people that can supply dinner and sack lunches to them. And so we're going to do that several times in the amount of time that they're here along with other churches. And so we're just, we're just trying to pick up the pieces, man. We've already been involved in, and when I say we, not just us, literally every church in our area I can think of. Right. Involved in going to people's houses and, and cleaning up their yards and ensuring that they have what they need. Uh, so just to clarify, you're saying the Catholic church, the Christian church, every, every church. Yeah. Um, Drop the denominations. We were in a moment ago, uh, that, that I was telling you about a moment ago, had Catholics there, had a, had a Lutheran priest there, um, a Methodist priest, had, you know, of course, a non-denominational guy, Baptist, Church of Christ, everybody was there. Oh, so 
you know, this thing that we've been talking about for since we started eye to eye, you know, I think our second episode is why couldn't the churches get together? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we've finally come into a place where churches have decided, you know what, we can do better together. Could it be Um, an answered prayer? I mean, a a twisted answer prayer. I don't think it's a twisted answer to prayer. Uh, The Bible is very clear in Romans chapter eight, verse 28 to say that God works out for good. um, The things that happen bad to us, you know, right? Absolutely. Um, Who knows? I, Personally, I think this is what I think. It's what I feel in my spirit, if you want to know right. the truth. Right. Um, I feel in my spirit that God is priming America for a revival. Uh, and I'm not talking about like a tent revival service that's going to last Sunday to Wednesday. I'm talking about a true revival that brings churches under the true umbrella of Jesus Christ, where we can all worship together. We're still going to have our nuances of belief systems and stuff like that. Interpretations, right. But until until we all get together, we can't be as effective for the gospel as we're, we're disunified and the anointing exists in unity. And so I think God's preparing a unified church to really to, to, to win the lost in, in our communities. And so we're trying to get ahead of that as much as we can. Okay, you've never told me that before. So I'm going to, I want to share something with you. Um, I truly believe we've never shared this, but I truly believe there's a generation that knows God, sees the miracles. Then the next generation heard about the miracles from their parents, but they're one step away from God. The third generation usually doesn't know God. Yeah. And then we go back. I expect it to go back. I expect it to circle around just like the Bible's done all throughout that. Because the, the, the generation that doesn't know God sees such such generational negativity and um, disparity between their parents and what they have that they cry out to God. And so we see this literally all over the book of Judges. If you'll, if you'll read the book of Judges, this, there's a cycle of sin. Yeah. Uh, it's, that cycle is generational. We right. get, get to a place where we are just at the base of our human existence. And according to scripture, do, do what is right in our own eyes. Right? We get Which stiff is- neck at the end. Yeah. yeah, and then God punishes us, and in our punishment, we we cry out to Him, and in our crying out to Him, there's a revival, and then He blesses a generation. I feel the same way you do. I felt it for years. I so, feel like we're having another '70s Jesus movement coming. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know why, but it's coming. I feel it coming, and I don't know why. But we've never shared this, so my spirit and your spirit are in line alignment with that thought process. Yeah, and you'll be surprised how many pastors I talk to that believe the same thing. Um, it, the, the model's laid out too distinctively, not just in post-New mm-hmm. Testament history, but in pre-New Testament history in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. I go over and over and over and over again, this generational, and then there's a revival, and then we're good for two or three generations. And I don't know that it's a single generation that this happens, Right. There's a couple generations and then a couple generations until they're finally at a place where they're completely base, doing what's right in their own mind, and God punishes them. He just turns them over to their depravity. And right. it, it turns out well in the next generation. You did exactly what I've thought. I've never said it to you, but I've thought it for years. Now, to get back on track into what we were talking about in the beginning, uh, where are you guys at now? With, um, with the relief effort? Yeah. So right now we're, we're kind of in a planning phase um, to transition from that immediate um, assistance to that long-term assistance. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an organization that has been started um, to help this process. And so essentially, I'm putting my hands in the screen on purpose. So there's these people that have stuff that they want to give away, right? Whether they be time, resources, finances, whatever, uh, and people that need time, resources, finances, or whatever. Mm-hmm. The problem is that these two people rarely know how to connect, right? Um, right. And so this guy's got, even if it's $100, and he's trying to get it to this person that doesn't have food, he doesn't know that person, so he doesn't know how to get it to them. So Recover Lebanon 2020, we have, there's a, it has its own Facebook page and all of that. Right. Um, Praise God, because God is so good to us. My wife has been asked to co-lead that organization for our whole county. That's great. 
on. So she, she's administrating the Facebook page and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, she had a meeting with the mayor this morning. But anyway, so here in the middle of this is the Recover Lebanon 2020. Conduit. They're the conduit between the two. And right. so the stuff is funneled to them and then it's funneled out to the people. And so they're holding weekly, and this is where we're at right now. Uh, we just had our first one. They just had their first one. I'm, I'm, I'm really just helping where I can. Um, they just had their first community meeting yesterday. So they're going to have a community meeting every Thursday where people can come that need help to fill out paperwork. There'll be a link where they can fill out their needs, and those needs will be shot out to the, the wide list of people willing to help churches, not-for-profits, uh, corporations, roofing companies, stuff like this. So that so that the people that have and the people that need can can find their place and find their stuff. So got it. So if somebody's right. watching right now and they I've been contacted from people all over the world. Uh, Denmark is writing me, hey, you guys okay? I'm like, yeah, it was 10 miles from my house. So yeah. um, but for the people that was right underneath it, it's terrific still to this moment. I can't imagine the PTSD that came out of that. So if somebody wants to help, what do you recommend them do? Um, we have a full-time counselor here on staff, and we've we've opened up. If anybody in this immediate area needs post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety counseling, um, we've we're, we've offered that. If they'll just email the church at info at launchpoint.church, we're offering that that for free to anybody that may need it. What about the worldwide help that wants to help you? So what I would do is I would go to the Facebook page. There, there should be or will be a link. Yeah, link. yeah. And it's it, the Facebook link page is Lebanon Recovers 2020. Mm -hmm. And like that page, um, see how they can help. And, and that's, that's what I would recommend doing right now. And then that may change later. We, we can update that. The only reason we didn't get together the past two weeks is because you've been working with this organization. Yeah. You've been so busy and so part of everything and such, such a, forgive me for blowing your horn, but a servant of the, of the Lord that it's been amazing that I, I don't care if we do another episode. All I care about is the people. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. But I tell you, everybody here is doing the same thing. I'm just happy to be the face that's in front of your camera right now. Right, right, right. I tell you, so, I was blessed, though, and you can cut this out if you want to, because I don't want to sound arrogant, but we were on the bus last Saturday, um, heading to, to an area in our town that's been hit, and the city police chief got on board and said, hey, I appreciate you guys helping, just kind of giving the safety brief and all that. And he said, you guys are blessed that you have Pastor Jim on this bus with you, because you won't find him on the news. You're always going to find him on this bus. I'm going to leave this in. Sorry. I always do. <laughs> but it's true. It, he's right. It's time that we get out and, and prove the God that we serve. Not that we need to prove him, but we need to prove our trust in him, that, that we believe what he tells us. And sometimes, you know, the, the book of James is all about boot leather theology. You can talk about religion all day long, but until you put your work boots on, until you put gloves on, you're not convincing me that you truly believe it. Right. You're just sitting learning, but doing nothing with it. You're becoming a glutton and you're doing nothing. You're not working off what you're learning. Um, so I, I know you, you would rather put a lady from your church at the forefront and get credit for what she's doing than yourself. You're not the, you're not the camera hog ever, ever. Well, so, we're just trying to serve, brother. We're just trying to serve. I, I applaud you guys. And uh, I will do, I'll put a link down below to the organization I have a link to your, can you tell us about the sermon you just, you're starting the sermon series? So I started it last week. It's called Nevertheless. I was going to do it as a one-off um, just to deal with the tornadoes. Um, and essentially I, I came out of Psalms 145 and I broke down Psalms 145 because that's a, that's a song of, that's a song of praise. And so nevertheless, for this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason, I will praise God. No matter what's going on, I will praise God. And then this week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, nevertheless, I am equipped. And I'm going to come out of 2 Timothy 1.7 that says, I am, a, I am equipped with a gift. Because he, verse 6, he says, um, take the gift I have given you and fan it into flame. So we've all been given a gift that we're expected to share with people. 
and we're capable of sharing that people through the equipping of the spirit of love, through the equipping of the spirit of um, uh, power and the equipping of discipline and, and how we're obligated to not only walk in that, but to share that with others. Uh, that message is so needed. So I think we have a link to your podcast down below too. If anybody wants to hear your services, they can just do it. We're up on YouTube finally too. So. Oh, you are? We'll add that in too. I, I think it's all good stuff. It's all good information. All right, Pastor Jim, thank you for your time. And um, hopefully we'll get together again for the next episode. If you need a few weeks to take care of Nashville, just let me know. Love you, buddy. I love you too. Take care.